Hi, I'm Owen Williams. This is actually a talk and not a sound test. Um, so I'm a, uh, a programmer sort of in, in my spare time. I've never actually had a job doing it, but I've been doing it forever. And um, I was talking to Val a couple weeks ago and mentioned that I had done some work with the Oodler Soundscape Generation Program. Um, it, was, it was actually a while ago that I actually sort of worked with it more actively, but um, I checked in and it's actually still being maintained and it's still an excellent uh, piece of software for writing sort of randomly generated um, soundscapes. Um, and what, what makes it interesting is that you can take a lot of small pieces and put them together to make something that sounds like something you might have done as a field recording um, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to talk a little about sort of the basic structure of Boodler, how you sort of get started just downloading it and running programs, and then diving into the details of how I made my particular soundscape, which is a one hour rainstorm that starts with no rain and then ramps up to a large thunderstorm and then ramps back down again. Um, and that, that soundscape sort of demonstrates a lot of the power behind Boodler um, API and all the cool things you can do with it. Um, so first off, I just need to thank Andrew Plotkin, aka okay. there's a there's a talk by somebody named Zark, is that the same person? You're welcome. Thank you very much for Boodler. <laughs> um, I mean obviously I didn't I didn't write it and you're the one maintaining it, so um, you know I just I just I just wrote the soundscape and that's sort of the easy part. And they also um, Zark collected all of these free to use sound samples that are used inside Boodler, which is also most of the work is finding, you know, free to distribute samples that are, um, wor you know, worth using and sound good. Um, I also need to thank my brother who originally discovered the program first and wrote some of the, the agents that I use in the program. Um, that's enough slides. Okay, so so Boodler is a Python-based system. Um, it's it starts with, it, so it has, it, the newer versions have a package management system, and so what you can do is you can download, um, before you had to download every single uh, sound file, which was a huge, gigantic uh, archive of a couple hundred megabytes, and now it has a system where you can download a specific uh, soundscape, and it will pull in the necessary audio for that soundscape. Um, so if you're looking to get started with Boodler, um, you, can, you can download the main program and there are packages for it. And then you can go into the library and pull in uh, specific packages that you want to listen to. Um, the, main, the main structure for a Boodler soundscape is a series of agents uh, that fire at particular times. So, uh, one thing I can do is I can demo So you can start with something simple where you just have a single file that's repeating over and over again So something like this So this is the light rain um, Sound effect and it's I mean this is the code for it and what it's doing is it's just repeating the same file over and over again. If you listen to it, you can start to hear the repetition in the file. And so, a lot of the trick of making a convincing soundscape is covering up those repetitions and those scenes. And there's there's, there's a series of ways you can sort of get around that. Because if you have too few sounds and they're not doing anything, then it's just going to sound like a series of noise that's sort of repeating every three or four seconds. Um, so when I originally went to write my sort of rainstorm soundscape, I came up with sort of a few ways to get around so that you wouldn't hear the repetition. One of the things is adding randomness, either randomness for timing randomness for choice of sounds, randomness for um, parameters like pitch, volume, stereo panning. 
And a single sound effect just varied in pitch can sound like multiple different sound effects if you're, if you're varying these things. So one of the other, I have a dripping water sound, uh, sound agent. And all this is, is a single, again, a single sound file, but it's randomized in terms of pitch, and it's randomi randomized in terms of when it happens. And, um, you know, within the soundscape, I can actually speed up and slow down the delay between the points. And so I can, you know, you, you can get something that doesn't just sound like a single file. Um, I mean, the, the major goal I had for, for the soundscape was I wanted to be able to imagine that you're in a certain place. And so the question is, what is that, what's in that place, and what, what is the environment around it? And so for a rainstorm, okay, you can just have rain, but, you know, I imagined a specific location. I imagine a field, so what does a field have? It's going to have bugs, it's going to have frogs, there's going to be animals you know, making noise. Uh, I don't have any bird sound effects, there's no birds. Um, but I also imagine that there's, you know, maybe a, a rain bucket collecting water, and that's where the, where the plinky drops come in. So as the rain increases, you hear the, the plinkiness get faster and higher pitched as something is, you know, so it's, it's sort of creating a story around the soundscape rather than just pulling in random uh, files and seeing what happens. So, a good example of, so let's talk about the, the animals. So I have the frogs section. So most of this is one, one frog, but then, you know, I bring one in every so often. And even though the main background loop is just going and going and going forever, you know, having some punctuation with the other sound effects, you know, again, adds some more randomness, adds some more weird variation to the whole thing. Um, I still use this frog sound effect as my SMS notification to this day. And I, you know, I wrote, I wrote this stuff probably 10 years ago at this point. Um, and then another, and then the other big part of it is just is magic numbers all over the place inside the uh, soundscape, and it's just listening to it, you know, put, raising the gain on some things, lowering it on others, and just piling up this stuff until you know the the heavy storm has six or seven agents, all of which have been very carefully mixed, just running it, listening to it, deciding if the wind sounds too strong, and then pulling it down again. Um, so, let me, let me give you an example. We haven't heard too much of the layering stuff. So, you heard the light rain, um, the light rain agent, but we can also do the medium. That's a little loud. I think we need to, uh, Should you do it on your end, or you want me to do it on my end? Probably better if you do it on your end. Right, I, just I, do it on I can pull it down a little bit. Yeah. Still too hot. Uh, I, I I get it. Don't worry. About okay. It. So now you've heard a bunch of the pieces, you've heard the little plinky water stuff, you've heard some of the frogs, and you've heard just the rain by itself. Um, so now we can do the full effect. So, and you'll notice I even start with a fade up. 
I don't just drop it in because you know you want to have you know it's an art to it, and so you have to have um, these into it. So you hear there's a stream running by. You hear the the insects, and you hear at some point you start to hear distant thunder. And so this whole, this whole soundscape goes for an entire hour. Um, most soundscapes are basically a, a group of sounds that just sort of repeat and they don't really, they don't really go anywhere. And so in Boobler, it's actually kind of difficult to create a, sort of a long-term sort of story like, like this has. So the way that it works, I mean, most agents, you just basically fire them and you say, either repeat yourself or you know, launch yourself after a certain amount of delay. And so what I did to program the whole storm is keep piling up these delays and delays and delays. So from a programmatic standpoint, it has scheduled the entire soundscape at launch time. It's just that certain things don't happen for 20 minutes. And other things are just times so that they'll fade out by the time that, that other thing is fading in. So you can, so the no storm yet agent is, let's see how this work. So it lasts for eight minutes plus or minus a bit, because you know you don't want it to be the same every time. Um, I tell it to fade out the crickets, you know, Pretty soon, once it starts raining, and again, it's thinking about what it, you know, if you're actually in a rainstorm, what is it going to be like? And so, you, you know, the, the animals are going to shut up pretty soon once it starts raining because they go underground. And that's sort of, you know, that's the, the theory behind the whole thing. Um, so this. Uh, soundscape is a part of the Bootler collection. You can download it um, and you can try it yourself and you can see some of the tricks I've used to make a sort of long-term project. Um, I think it would be, if I were to, to, to take on sort of improving it, I've always wanted to do a surround sound version where you could do, you know, 5.1 sort of really immerse people in a soundscape. Um, I'd like to have some higher quality samples that we can find them just because some of them sound a little crunchy these days. Um, it's not enough th thunder sound effects, so that gets a little repetitive. But, and maybe some more support for, for this type of long-term programming where it's, right now there's a lot of addition and subtraction just trying to keep track and count the number of delays so that nothing gets on top of each other. But overall, you know, I think it's not pretty good. That's it. <laughs> Questions? Um, uh, do it again. Yes. You want to use the microphone? Yeah, yes, can you use the mic? So not to take over. No, no, no. Uh, thank you for doing this thing, which has always been one of the most impressive selling points for Google. Um, the problem with Google is that uh, I, I sort of maintain it, like the, the website hasn't died but I haven't done very much with it, mostly over the past several years. Um, all these sound effects come from a bunch of very shady sound effects CDs that I bought off of like used record stores in about 2000. Um, I have started finally picking it up again and going to freesound.org and getting actual uh, Creative Commons licensed sounds and with a lot more thunder, which I will be uploading fairly soon, so there, there will be opportunity for stuff. Um, I also have a secret project which I should talk to you about later. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, thanks for coming up and doing this. Yeah, no problem. Any, any questions? Yeah. Has Boodler been adopted in any kind of a game engine? As, uh, you know, Has Boodler been adopted in a game engine? Um, not, not, that, that, not that I know. I mean, I I thought about using it for actual, you know, either video production or game production to just generate a background, you know, ambience track uh, because it's perfect for that sort of thing. And then you don't actually have to go to the field and record stuff. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, one of the things I did at one point was uh, go into NIST 5, rip out all the sound effects, and stick them into the loop arrangement and recreate them as Google soundscapes. But of course, I can't attribute any of that because it's NIST. I mean, uh, well, I'll just talk a second about um, some of the different. I mean, one thing my brother contributed, which is is the idea of agents like the volume modulate agents. So just automating the sort of randomness that I was talking about. So automating, um, in this case, something where the volume is just steadily increased and decreased. The intermittent sounds list, which is what I use for some of the insects that you don't hear very often, where it just takes care of all the random firing stuff. So there's there's all sorts of um, there's all sorts of infrastructure inside Google to enable that sort of that sort of behavior. Yeah. More questions? Or we just want to listen. Now, I, I, there was once uh, a time when I had Boodler running and I was listening to it, and then I hit pause and it didn't stop because it was actually raining outside. It <laughs> totally blew my mind. All right? Awesome. Thank you.